tell us basically what is insulin resistance and why why is it dangerous? Why do we even care? Like what okay. do we care about? So the reason why insulin resistance is a problem is because insulin resistance is the baseline metabolic disturbance or the baseline metabolic condition that influences your risk for the development of all forms of diabetes, whether it's pre-diabetes or type two diabetes or gestational diabetes. It also affects your blood glucose control in type one and 1.5 diabetes. It also increases your risk for heart disease. And when I say heart disease, I'm talking about hypertension, high cholesterol, coronary artery disease, atherosclerosis. It also increases your risk for many forms of cancer. It also increases your risk for fatty liver disease. It also increases your risk for chronic kidney disease. It also increases your risk for dementia, which can progress to Alzheimer's disease. It also increases your risk for peripheral neuropathy, which is nerve damage in your hands and, and, and feet. It also increases your risk for erectile dysfunction. And I think I'm missing one more. It also influences, increases your risk for retinopathy. And can I add to that autoimmune diseases? Um, inflammation of your autoimmune disease is worsened by insulin resistance. So um, Bingo. Nelson. There you go. So there's almost like no chronic disease that I know of that isn't negatively impacted by insulin resistance. That's why it's important. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, the question is, well, what is it? Okay. So I've spent an inordinate amount of time studying insulin resistance. Uh, manipulating insulin resistance inside of laboratory animals when I was in uh, graduate school, performing experiments, analyzing those experiments, reading more information, talking with people and beyond. And it has become abundantly clear to me that insulin resistance is caused by a diet that is high in fat, particularly saturated fat. So when you consume a diet that's high in saturated fat, what ends up happening is that those saturated fat molecules go into your mouth, they go down your, your uh, esophagus, they get inside of your stomach, they end up getting inside of your small intestine. Those saturated fat molecules are attached to, they're, they're part of a, a structure called a triglyceride. The triglyceride molecule is basically ripped apart inside of your small intestine, and the fatty acids are then sucked through the walls of your small intestine to be put into your blood. Once they're in your blood, they then circulate to tissues. The question is, where are they going to go? That is a very important question. The, tri the, the fatty acid molecules end up getting transported to, number one, your adipose tissue, which is your fat tissue. And your fat tissue is, you know, tissue, it's in your neck, it's in your armpits, it's in your, uh, your chest muscle, in your abdomen, in your butt, in your in subcutaneous depot underneath your skin. It's everywhere, okay? So the fatty acid from your food ends up inside of that adipose tissue, which is actually the right place for it to go. That is a safe place for it to be kept. The problem is that in addition to those fatty acids going inside of your adipose tissue, they also end up inside of your liver and inside of your muscle, because that is a sort of like spillover compartment when there's, when your, your adipose tissue says enough is enough. I don't want any more. So the accumulation of those fatty acids inside of your liver and muscle or, or the entrance of those fatty acids into your liver and muscle is okay as long as it's in a very small quantity because you, that's biologically, that's how they're designed to be able to take up small amounts of it, store it for small periods of time, and then utilize it for energy when the time is right. But what ends up happening is that when you consume a diet that is high in saturated fat, the saturated fat molecules end up getting inside of your liver and muscle in large quantities. And then that causes your liver and muscle cells to have to store it in large quantities. And then as soon as they begin to store that, those fatty acids in large quantities, that then causes a defect to the insulin signaling mechanisms inside of those same cells. And the reason why this happens is actually very, it's very straightforward biology, but you kind of have to like wrap your head around it, right? Imagine you're inside of a, you're, you are a muscle cell. And you are somewhere inside of, let's say, you know, Chris's bicep, right? So Chris, flex your biceps. Look at that right there. So she's got, you know, 700 trillion cells right there inside of that bicep. <laughs> Some large amount of cells, right? So you're one tiny muscle cell that's sitting inside of her bicep, right? And Chris decided to eat a really high fat meal. So the, tri the, the, the fatty acids from that high fat meal are now in circulation and they are moving about inside of these little lipoprotein particles and they're there to be delivered places. So you as the cell inside of her bicep see the fatty acid and you say to yourself, okay, cool. I can take a little piece of that thing, but I don't want very much. 
But if there's a whole bunch coming inside of her diet, then you end up having to take up more than you are designed to take up. So you end up taking on an excess quantity of fatty acids. And when you do that, it signals a high energy state inside of the cell. And the high energy state basically says, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't need all this energy. I am now storing energy in excess of what I was designed for. And as a result of that, the cell goes into a self-defense mechanism and it says, okay, how am I going to block more anything from coming in here? I don't want more fatty acids. I don't want more amino acids and I don't want more glucose. Okay. I am, I am full. So what it does is it basically says, how am I going to block energy from getting inside of me? What's the most effective way for me to protect myself against glucose and fatty acids and amino acids? The simplest answer to that question is to block insulin signaling because insulin is the single most powerful anabolic hormone in, a, in, in, in all mammals. What that means is that when insulin is present, insulin can put glucose and fatty acids and amino acids inside of cells very easily. That's its job. So when insulin is present and insulin, this insulin signaling mechanisms inside of any given cell are responsive and listening, then that means that glucose and amino acids and fatty acids can get in very quickly. So if that muscle cell that, that you are, you decide that you're going to block insulin from working, then it puts up a, a wall, a protective mechanism to make it so that when insulin comes by and says, knock, knock, I got glucose and fatty acids and amino acids in the blood, do you want to take it up? You can say, you know what? Sorry, I'm not listening to you. I'm playing the game of insulin resistance aka insulin rejection. I am choosing to not pay attention to you because if I do that, I can block myself from taking on more energy. So that is the insulin resistance game. It's a self-protective mechanism that muscle cells do all throughout her bicep, not just one isolated cell, everywhere in her bicep and in her tricep and in her deltoids and in her chest muscles and in her uh, abdomen and her quadriceps and her calves. It's everywhere. Okay. So that happens there. It also happens inside of her liver. Okay. So this, it's basically a way for tissues to block insulin from talking to it. And as a result of that, if insulin goes and knocks on the door and says, huh, there's stuff inside the blood. Do you want to take it up? And the answer is constantly no, 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 from so many different muscle cells and liver cells. Then what ends up happening is that glucose in particular ends up pooling inside of the blood and it gets stuck inside of the blood. It's got nowhere to go. And so you as the end user find that when you eat a high fat diet and then you try and eat something that's carbohydrate rich, like even a single banana or a mango or you know, a plate of black beans, it doesn't really matter. Something that has carbohydrate energy in it. You check your blood glucose and two hours later, you're like, what the heck? Why is my blood glucose at 180? Why is my glucose at 212? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, I guess bananas are bad for me. Because you ate the banana and it caused your blood glucose to go high. But the reason is because there's a traffic jam that was caused by the fatty acids that had accumulated before you ate the banana. Am I making any sense at all? Totally, totally making sense. That is so well done the way you explained that picture so we can visualize it. And you guys out there listen, if you have questions as Cyrus is talking, please post them and um, we'll try to snatch him to answer some of our questions about this so we, we all understand it. But um yeah. So what I think is so interesting is each of these has an important role in our body, insulin and glucose and, and the amino acids and fatty acids, but it's when they oh, they build up too much or they're in the wrong place that we start to run into trouble. And then, so here we are now with insulin resistance and um, we're going to talk in a minute how we're going to, how to detect this, but um, we have someone here who's not tolerating their mango or their banana. They're insulin resistant at this point. So they're going to have a high insulin level circulating through, and they're going to probably have high blood sugar circulating through right now because they're in this insulin resistant state. And that is where we're going to start getting damage. This high insulin and this high uh, blood sugar is going to start damaging our body. Can you explain some of the things that might, the damage that might be happening at this point in someone's body? Yeah, exactly. So that's a great question because when I was in graduate school, um, my graduate school professor, who's a world world, he's one of the world's authorities, foremost authorities on carbohydrate metabolism. He walks up to me, he goes, pop quiz. How many people have died from diabetes ever? And I was like, Hmm, 
it's probably a big number. I was like, 500 million people. He goes, less. And I was like, less. Yeah, interesting. 200 million, less. 100 million, less. 50 million, less. What? 10 million? Less. 2 million? Less. I was like, what, what is this? Some kind of game? And I said, what's the answer? He goes, zero. Zero people have died from diabetes ever. And I was like, that's not true. He goes, it is true. You don't die from diabetes. You die from the complications mm. of diabetes. It is a difference. Diabetes unto itself is not likely to kill you. It's all of the organ failure and tissue dysfunction that happens as a result of it that is what leads to death and increased risk for death. And I was like, oh my God, you're totally right. He goes, just think about the satellite of conditions that spin out of control when your glucose is high. Nerve damage, brain damage, thyroid damage, liver damage, kidney damage, uh, blood vessel damage and beyond. And I was like, man, you're totally right. So that's why you see that people who are living with high blood glucose for some period of time, you probably heard this story before of, your coworker's dad or your coworker's landlord or you know your your husband's brother's sister who ends up with you know they have diabetes and then they have to get a finger amputated well what 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 does that happen right it's because the t the finger ends up with very poor circulation and becomes necrotic right it's because the finger ends up with a very poor blood supply and as a result of that they have to actually amputate the finger so that there's no you know it doesn't get worse over the course of time People end up getting hands cut off. People end up getting blind. People end up having to get kidney transplants. Mm -hmm. People end up with liver transplants. People end up with dementia. They can't, they have no spatial recognition. They don't know who their mother and father is anymore. And then they end up passing away, right? That's the problem. Mm -hmm. right? The problem is, yeah, your high blood glucose is, is worth paying attention to because it is the gateway to organ failure.